Yo, really quickly before I start the video, I just wanted to give you guys a huge, huge thank you for 6,000 subscribers. You guys' support means so much to me. It fuels me, honestly. You know, I would gen genuinely would not be doing this without you guys and the happiness that your support gives me. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys. And I'm really excited to bring you guys bigger and better content moving forward. All right, let's get into the video. What is good? What is up? It's Jordan or Texans Thoughts and I'm back with another film breakdown today. We're showing how John Mechie the third makes cornerbacks disappear. I'm super excited about our second round rookie wide receiver out of Alabama who has such a well-rounded game and can do a little bit of everything for the Houston Texans. If you guys enjoy, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more content, officially on the road to 7k, and comment down below who you want to see in the next film breakdown. Alright, let's dive into the film on John Mechie, because the film don't lie. Mechie is an uber-talented wide receiver who stepped into the starting role for Alabama as a sophomore in 2020 after Jalen Waddle went down with a season-ending injury. He helped open up the field and take pressure off Devontae Smith and still put up nearly 1,000 yards with 6 touchdowns. Then, in 2021, Mechie got to be the guy and had an even better season with 1,100 yards and 8 touchdowns. The production as an underclassman in the SEC is great, but even on the Texans, like he may be the third option behind Brandon Cooks and Nico Collins. That'll make Mechie even more dangerous as he'll face the opposing team's second or third best corner rather than the best. I like to call Mechie a magician because he has so many tricks up his sleeve to make a cornerback disappear. His route running is easily his biggest strength, and it's right up there with the top route runners in the entire 2022 draft class like Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave. Mechie is so smooth, sudden, and deceptive and it all starts with his releases off the line. The release is the first step in running a good route. Wide receivers want to create an instant advantage right after the snap, and Mechie is so good at faking the cornerback into believing his route is going in one direction, but he's really going in the opposite direction. In the slot versus Auburn, Mechie uses a hop release, bringing his feet from a staggered position to having them parallel. This freezes the cornerback as he does not know which direction Mechie is going to attack, and from this position, Mechie has a two-way go, meaning he has two ways he can attack the cornerback, to the outside or to the inside. Then in a millisecond, Mechie shoots his right foot to the outside, which forces the cornerback to shift his own weight to the outside and follow Mechie in that direction. But Mechie isn't going outside on a slot fade or an out route. He's attacking inside on a slant. Mechie fools the corner, but to create optimal separation, he also uses his hands like a pass rusher, swimming over the corner's last ditch attempt to hold Mechie and prevent the slant. No luck though, and that's an easy yard gain. The best route runners in the NFL know how to make all their routes look similar. That way, cornerbacks never know what's coming. In that same Auburn game, this time versus the 35th overall pick, Roger McCreary, Mechie makes it look like he's running the same slant route he won earlier with, but instead he's setting up a whip route to win the game in overtime. Off the release, Mechie brings his feet parallel again, making it look like a hop release is coming and setting up that two-way go. Then he gives a hard fake outside, forcing McCreary to commit outside with his hips and hand. From here, Mechie flips his hips inside and then uses his inside foot like a pivot in basketball spitting off of it and whipping McCreary in the opposite direction. This whip route is so deadly, it's like a dangerous double move built off of a slant route. Mechie showed the threat of his slant early in the game and used the whip as a finisher when his team needed to close out the game. That's just cold-blooded against one of the most battle-tested cornerbacks in this draft class. And now with the Titans. We've seen two reps of how Mechie's releases can beat press coverage, but when he's facing off coverage, the stem of the route, or the top of the route, is the most important part of the route to create separation. In off coverage versus McCreary, Mechie doesn't need to create an instant advantage at the line, like versus press, because now McCreary has a lot of space to work with. 
Instead, Mechi needs to close the space between him and McCreary, and then separate again when he gets into closer quarters combat. Mechi is sort of running a blaze out route here, where he needs to sell an inside fake before breaking outside. He speed releases inside and points his shoulders to the opposite numbers, forcing McCreary to flip his hips inside and run full speed in fear of an inside crossing route. But Mechi fools McCreary again and drops his hips low to separate at the stem. By getting low and bending his knees, Mechi is sitting in a chair, and by lowering his center of gravity, he's able to control his body movements, stop on a dime, and leave McCreary in the dust. That suddenness is seen all throughout Mechi's game. On this rep, he sells the vertical route downfield by accelerating off the release, and just when you think he's about to beat McCreary down the sideline for a touchdown, he drops his hips, sits in the chair, and comes back to the ball on the curl route. We've seen Mechi win a lot of routes in the short area of the field on slants, swips, and curls, but don't get it mistaken, he is a 3 level route runner, meaning he can win short, intermediate, and deep. This option route versus Georgia is a perfect example of how Mechi wins in the intermediate area of the field versus zone coverages. From the slot, Mechi is running an in-breaking route and trying to get behind the linebackers and in front of the safety. But Georgia defends this well with N'Kobe Dean getting good depth in the passing lane and the safety being ready to pounce on the throw over top. But you can see the chemistry between Bryce Young and John Mechie. They are on the exact same page reading the defense, as Mechie understands he can't keep running this inbreaker, but has a ton of space if he bends his route to the outside. Young also points this out simultaneously as Mechie is turning his head and body to run outside. This is just very smart route running and coverage recognition, which will come in handy in the NFL. Here's another smart intermediate route by Mechi, where he reads the coverage and adjusts his route to get open. He's running a crossing route initially, but there are two Auburn defenders who come out of nowhere to pick him up. Pre-snap, this looks like cover 3 zone with a single high safety, but post-snap, it's a cover 1 man coverage with this defensive end dropping off in a hole zone over the middle. The DN dropping into the middle and the free safety flying downhill aggressively both take away the initial angle Mechley would typically have on his crosser. But he doesn't just keep running towards the defense, he runs away from it, adjusting his route further downfield to give Bryce Young an option as he scrambles away from the pressure. Mechley was really solid in these scramble rule situations, always giving multiple efforts to shake free of his defender and give his quarterback an open target. Davis Mills is no Bryce Young in terms of mobility, but I'll admit he showed some ability to make the defend first defender miss and extend the play, much better than he did in college. So having a guy like Mechi who is going to consistently fight and scrap to get open is a big asset for the Texans. Continuing on the theme of Mechi being a 3 level route runner, let's finish it off with some deep routes. Mechi's running a slot fade here and absolutely burns this poor Georgia safety. Mechi knows he has an athletic advantage here and wastes no time on his route. Everything is about speed here, especially because Young is backed up in his own end zone. The route is solid, but it's the ball tracking and hands to finish the rep that really showcases his capability as a vertical threat. Here's an even better example, versus Georgia again, but this time in 2020. The outside cornerback lined across from Mechie blitzes, leaving Mechie with a one-on-one -on -one with a safety, and well, he's always going to take advantage of that. Now this isn't just any safety though, it's first round draft pick Lewis Seen who ran a 4-3-7 40-yard dash. Seen's more athletic than a ton of cornerbacks and wide receivers, but Mechi shows off his acceleration out of his break and then uses his inside hand to swat away at Seen and stack him vertically. By stacking Seen, Mechi wants to position himself to the inside a bit while he's running downfield. This puts Seen in an impossible position to recover as he would have to run through Mechi to get to the ball, causing a flag. By executing this technique, Mechi creates space for Mac Jones to place this throw to the outside, which Mechi tracks over his outside shoulder and extends his arms to finish the rep for the touchdown. Adding this vertical threat ability will do wonders for the Texans, who finish 31st in the NFL in explosive plays. Mechi's speed, acceleration, and route running technique makes him a dangerous wide receiver to pair with Brandon Cooks. Both Cooks and Mechi can play multiple wide receiver positions, and that versatility is the next strength to Mechi's game I want to quickly touch on. Mechi got moved all over the field at Alabama, including outside at the X wide receiver position, mainly in 2021 under Bill O'Brien. 
This means he lines up right on the line of scrimmage and would need to beat cornerbacks in press coverage. That's where his deceptive releases really come in handy. Mechie's best positions though are in the slot and as a Z wide receiver, which he did a little bit in 2021 and more in 2020. In the slot, he masterfully utilizes a two-way go, maximizing the amount of space he has when working to the middle of the field, and is really a mismatch weapon versus linebackers. This is where I would expect him to play the majority of his snaps for the Texans. Finally, the Z wide receiver lines up a few yards behind the line of scrimmage, and Mechie thrives here too. By lining up behind the line of scrimmage, it creates opportunities for Mechie to have a free release, meaning he wouldn't have to beat press. This gives Mechie the ability to catch the ball on the move and create yards after the catch, which is another big part of his game. Since 2020, Mechie has accumulated 1,000 yards after the catch alone. Those yak numbers led all wide receivers in the Power 5 over the past two seasons. Mechie is so good on these underneath crossing routes because of how he turns into a running back after the catch. The change of direction and twitchiness he uses to get open before the catch is also an asset to separate from defenders after the catch. Time and time again, Mechie has turned two yard gains into first downs, and I think he's instantly the best Texans wide receiver at getting yak. The last strength to Mechie's game I want to show is his competitive run blocking. Alabama loved to run condensed formations with tight wide receiver splits. This would bring the wide receivers closer to the front seven rather than spread out across the field. The idea is to utilize these wide receivers as blockers versus linebackers and help create a numbers advantage to help out the running back. Mechie may not be the biggest wide receiver and he's not going to consistently pancake defenders, that's not what I'm saying, but he's feisty and he will give it his all to help out the run game. For a team that finished dead last in rushing offense last year, Mechie is yet another commitment and investment they've made to improving in that regard. Now, as I like to say, no player is perfect. And while Mechie is insanely well-rounded, can line up at every wide receiver position, run elite routes to all levels of the field, create after the catch and block pretty well, he does have one flaw, and that's his hands in contested catch, catch and traffic scenarios. Mechie runs beautiful routes, I mean, it's a work of art, but at the end of the day, you need to be able to finish the rep with a catch, and when Mechie has a defender breathing down his neck, he tends to lose focus occasionally. In fact, Mechie had more career drops than times he found the end zone, finishing with 15 drops to just 14 touchdowns. Part of this is because Mechie's wingspan is in the 15th percentile, his arm length is in the 16th percentile, and his hand size is in the 39th percentile. But to me, the physical measurements aren't so much a limitation, you know, they aren't the major factor for the drops. Mechie has shown he can catch away from his frame from time to time, but it really comes down to his concentration when he's just about to land a big hit, or when he takes his eyes off the ball trying to run before securing the catch. Just because he had issues with drops in college though, doesn't mean it will always follow him through every single year in his NFL career. And the fact that it's pretty much his only improvement area means he will have plenty of time to focus on that one flaw. So I'm not too overly worried about this, but I just wanted to bring it to y'all's attention. Overall, I absolutely loved that the Texans were aggressive and traded up for Mechie. The wide receivers were flying off the board faster than most expected and Mechie wasn't making it to our next pick in the third round. Hell, if he didn't tear his ACL, I bet he would have snuck into the first round. He's an uber-talented wide receiver and a proven winner at the biggest program in the world. I mean, he'll be a great addition to the Texans and helps give Davis Mills weapons to see, you know, if he can really be the franchise guy. Looking at expectations for Mechie, history has shown and based on studies from doctors, you know, it will likely take him about half of the season to get back to 100% after that torn ACL. You know, getting back to that game speed that he was used to in college. It, it will be an adjustment, so just keep that in mind. And he might very well start week one, but be patient with the development and with the results on the field. And just kind of think about, you know, the bigger picture beyond this season. We got a great one in Mechie. And barring health, he should start for the Houston Texans for a long, long time. All right, that's going to do it for the video. If you guys enjoy it, please do hit that like button. Subscribe for more content and comment down below your thoughts on John Mechie. All right, take care, everyone. Come back for more. And remember, the film don't lie.